r slash credit reddit what is the worst secret your so is keeping from you but that you actually know my so is a veteran and very stereotypically manly he doesn't talk about his personal life with friends and he's pretty quiet in general this is a southern traditional dude who opens every door for every person he calls every person older than him ma'am and sir. Anyway, he has a lot of friends who are also this way and they often tease any man who says nice things about their women. His friend spilled the beans though, that one night, right after I met him, they all got crazy drunk, and he told all of them, I was the love of his life and we were going to get married one day. They all teased him, and were playing around when this one dude he doesn't know very well told him I had nice tits. He clocked him. He made such a commotion he's not allowed back in the bar. After his friend told me this story, I realized I had asked to go to that bar a couple of weeks ago, and he had made some excuse about the drinks being overpriced. I will never tell him I know, but if he asks me, I'll marry him. Edit. For all of you saying he's going to abuse me, I'm sorry but that's just hilarious. You know one story about him, one of which he is very ashamed. We are both highly educated, socially progressive, empathetic, and loving people. I guess I'm just asking for everyone to troll me with abuse stories now. I swear that this isn't even an option. I would never stay with someone that I had the slightest inkling they were going to hit me. Also, the guy he hit had a history of saying dirty shit about women and highly disrespecting them. He's had a couple of sexual assault allegations conveniently disappear. He's not a good dude. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, fuck him. Edit 2. Marriage has never been on my radar until I met this guy. I love him more than I've ever loved another person. But the actual act of marrying him isn't very important to me. However, as I mentioned, he is more traditional, and so marriage means something to him that it doesn't to me. When we first started having serious conversations about 5 years ago, this was also when I told him I was bisexual, about past relationships, etc. I jokingly promised him that if we ever decided to get married, I would let him plan the whole wedding. Fast forward and he and my mom talk about the wedding we are going to have. I think it's adorable and I love that it means something to him. We are both anthropologists, so I know he just likes rituals more than I do, and I would never take that away from him. If I proposed, he would be happy and accept, but it means so much to him to do it, I will just let him. My brother is getting married this year, and I know my so was going to propose, but stopped because he wanted us to have our own anniversary year. He tells my mom everything, and she lets shit slip bc she's old lol. What a sweetheart. When I was in Afghanistan, I wanted to use the money I made to buy a motorcycle. Combat pay is better than regular pay. I didn't have a car though, and I was getting out of the marines in 8 months and moving back to the midwest, where it is not at all practical to only have a motorcycle. I bought a car instead. Flash forward 2 years later, I meet my girlfriend and her 1 year old son at the end of an ugly marriage and we begin a relationship 2 years from that point we begin living together. Throughout all this time I've still been wanting to save for a motorcycle, but we needed to focus our money on more practical things. She needed a new car, we needed to pay for childcare, etc. I put my wants on hold to address our needs. She's known about my wanting a motorcycle for as long as she's known me, and finally she approved me to spend up to $1,500 on a bike if I could find one. Well, I found one for $2,000 on Craigslist, and it turned out the guy selling it was a friend from an old job I had as a security guard. He was a good friend and agreed to give me a friend price of $1,500. I went home and told my girlfriend, and she said that's great, we'll get it, if it's the one you want. She then found the Craigslist ad, I showed her pictures, contacted my friend, and schemed to buy it out from under me for the full asking price of $2,000. For a while I was bummed, because I didn't know anything other than that my friend had another buyer willing to pay the full asking price. I told him I was just glad that my girlfriend was going to let me buy one, and he responded with yeah you're lucky, gf's name here, sounds like a real keeper. 
the thing is, he had never met her, and I had never mentioned her name to him. So I had my suspicions. I played along, and continued searching for bikes, but never being satisfied with them, always saying my friend's bike was a way better deal, and that I thought I could do better. My birthday came around, she blindfolded me, and drove me over to his house. She even went out, and bought a bow, to place on it so there would no confusion, it was a present for me. I let on that I had a few suspicions because he immediately found another buyer after I told her about it a little later on but maintained that I was blown away by the surprise. She is definitely a keeper. Back when I was first starting to make my artwork public, I had a Kickstarter campaign to fund a tour. I had just started dating my so, but he gave a relatively significant amount of money anonymously. He tripped up in selecting his backer's reward, an original piece mailed to his house. When I saw the address, I definitely didn't suspect his roommates were just super supportive of my art. Edit, when I read worst secret, I thought it meant most poorly kept secret. Yes, we are still together, and I feel incredibly lucky for it. I said he gave a relatively significant amount. At the time, we were broke enough that I needed a Kickstarter to fund my art. We are still pretty broke, but now I receive grants from the state council on the arts, the city, and residences through various established arts organizations to fund my work, which is why I'd like to remain anonymous on here. Sorry, but support a local artist if you can. As for playing chess, I just lost a match to him this morning. So this is slightly different from the actual question, but I have a feeling I will never find a better place to tell this, so here goes. My grandmother got remarried when my dad was in middle school after divorcing my bio grandfather. This was in the late 70s. Anyway, step grandpa, SG, was a cool dad for a while, at least up until my dad and his older brother got into college. After that he started going off the emotional deep end, read, angry and borderline abusive. For a long time, both SG and grandma were in the, redacted for privacy, business. My dad and uncle both became attorneys and went to work at what was now the family company. Anyway, many years later, my dad and uncle are no longer working with SG and grandma and my mother manages most of the company. One day, a business associate quietly pulls my mother aside and says that they saw SG in public with a much younger man. She tells my father and uncle, who do some digging around, and find out he had used company funds to buy cars, apartments, etc for multiple 20-something men. He was in his early 70s. They are understandably shocked, and they all go over to my grandma's house, when SG is not there, to break it to her. Her response? Oh yeah, I've known that for years. She had suspected he was gay before they were married, but nobody talked about that sort of thing at the time or in her family. She knew about the affairs and she had a public health worker come to her front door to inform her he had HIV and give her a test as well. She declined to tell anyone this for close to 15 years. Anyway, they managed to convince her to divorce him, which took ages and ages. So, that's probably the worst secret that's ever been kept in my family. TL, doctor, step grandpa, asshole, was gay, embezzling money, and brought home HIV. Grandma knew for decades, and didn't feel the need to do anything. Edit, no, unfortunately, my grandma didn't keep his secret, because she was kind and non-judgmental. She kept it because she is super shallow with no forethought and cares way too much about her precious reputation. Edit number 2. I have absolutely no sympathy for SG. I respect the fact that he was uncomfortable coming out, but he had every opportunity to quietly divorce my grandma and move on with his life since she already knew. Also, he was always mean and vindictive, even when I was a child. The reason the public health worker showed up to their house is because he was given 30 days to inform her of his diagnosis and he didn't. Also, there's that whole embezzlement slash theft part. Real class act all around. He has been hiding his autistic from me for 10 years. Should clarify it's a long running on again off again thing between us, but even when it's off we were still good friends. 
he suffered abusive therapy and because of it thinks hiding his autism is the most important thing. Except that's like trying to hide an elephant in a bathroom and he's not always super high functioning. So it's always a weird charade of me pretending he's not autistic while busting my ass to gently handle that. I have no idea how to talk to him about it. I know he has a formal diagnosis. He was so traumatized from institutional medical abuse in the name of therapy that even mentioning it or acknowledging it can cause him to have a meltdown. He thinks if I knew, I wouldn't love him anymore, but I've known for years and I still love him. I like him just how he is, I just want things to be easier and less scary for him and I don't know how to help most of the time because he won't admit the problem. Her lupus is getting much worse, much more quickly than she had expected, and I'm afraid that she won't have much time left before her kidneys or liver fails. Apparently there's a ton of scar tissue forming already, even though she was diagnosed two weeks ago. My heart is filled completely with guilt because I'm still in school and she's works long 12 hour nights as a nurse, doing brutal, exhausting work. She tells me she's tired once in a while, but she's always so happy to see me, and she always tells me that she's going to take care of me and support me endlessly until I'm done with engineering school. I feel so useless because I don't have much money and it's hard for me to take care of her, yet she'll still take me out to eat so often and buys nice clothes for me when I would otherwise only be able to shop at thrift stores or clearance aisles. She loves me and tells me about how much potential I have, even if my grades aren't great and I'm struggling to do well in engineering. I feel that I'm part of the reason why she got sick. Maybe she feels she has to work so much, sometimes 4-6 to six days non-stop without days off in between to support the people in her life and also make time for me. The worst part is that she always smiles when we spend time together and still asks if I want to go hiking or play tennis, things that I love doing that she sometimes objects to, even if she's barely slept or eaten and is still physically exhausted. I worry she forces herself to for my sake. All I tell her is that I'm tired and I'd like to read comic books with her or put on Netflix, her favorites, and lay in bed and nap with her because I don't know how much longer we'll be able to do that together. She's gained about 20 pounds from water retention. For a slim petite little thing it's almost a fifth of her weight and her legs have swollen so much that she can't bend her knees or walk without intense pain. I couldn't bear to see her unconscious in her hospital room hooked up to fourths and machines, and it breaks my heart. I've known that I was going to marry her for a long time now, but I'm certain that I'm going to be by her side, no matter what happens, whether we have 5 months left together or 50 years. Edit, I don't know anything about autoimmune disease at all or medical stuff. My field of study is completely unrelated, and what I share is what I can make sense of. I hope someone can tell me that I'm dead wrong about all of this and that she's going to be 100% okay soon. Edit 2. Thank you to everyone who has replied for your kind words and your thoughts. I really appreciate that you're thinking of us. In my girlfriend's case, she's a new RN who works 12 hour shifts. She's been mentioning that she's felt tired for a few months now, but we figured it was just work fatigue. To cope with it, she's been drinking more coffee and energy drinks on her shift to keep up with the demands of her job. I'm kind of beating myself inside up for not knowing better earlier and just using my common sense. Edit 3. She's going to be okay. For a while, she could barely eat or speak, no appetite at all for a girl that lives for food. Now we are watching a movie together and she's yelling at the TV for having nothing good. She's got a bit of a temper, but if yelling means she's got some energy, I'll do my best to never get mad or hold it against her. I'm just happy that the love of my life is healthy. She's got to take about two dozen pills every day, and she's still got a lot of her water weight, and her hair is falling out, but she is a dream come true to me. This was from my ex, but... He always hid that he jerked off and watched porn, even though I knew he did. I'd feel him moving in the middle of the night, and it was the unmistakable rhythm of him beating his Vienna sausage. The porn thing was even better. He'd turn down the volume on his phone, 
but the light would shine in my face as I was sleeping facing him. I'd invariably wake up and watch him looking at porn and getting off. The last time I caught him, I had gotten into my car to run errands, and he had his phone synced to my car. I turned it on and after a few seconds, I heard the unmistakable moaning and slapping of a relatively decent porno. His mother was in the car with me, and we both laughed like idiots. I sent him a text, after about 5 solid minutes of listening and it said, save that video, it sounds really hot, and I want to watch it with you. Cue the sounds turning off, and a frantic text saying he was asleep, and he had a virus on his phone, so he had no idea where it came from. I don't know why he hid it from me. I encouraged masturbation and watching porn, and I never hid it when I did it. His fear of me knowing he did that culminated in a hilarious exchange one night in bed. After sex one night I asked why he refused to masturbate in front of me. This was his exact response. I'm Catholic. It's better to spill my seed in the belly of a whore than to spill it on the ground. This was maybe 10 minutes after we fucked. Edit. R.I.P. my inbox. But I'm loving every minute of it. Thank you. Ex-girl. She had a fairly large scar on her back and was incredibly self-conscious about it. She wouldn't even take her shirt off the first time we had sex. When I asked her about it, she said she had fallen from her horse when she was young. Fast forward a little and I'm out finding her a birthday present and have enlisted the help of her friend. I pick out a sexy singlet and her friend just lucks out me like I'm stupid. Apparently the scar on her back, which the singlet clearly revealed, wasn't from a fall, but an abusive ex-boyfriend who had pushed her onto his motorbike's exhaust pipe and burned her. We ended on good terms, and I never told her I knew. I hope she is doing well. Wow a similar thing happened to my best friend. She's got a huge burn scar on her lower back. For years, she would tell me that when she was little, she just accidentally fell in a campfire at Girl Scouts. A couple years later, her sister and I were talking about what would be the worst way to die. I mentioned being burned alive would be bad. And her sister said, yeah I still can't believe Jamie got those third degree burns and survived it. It was really bad. I asked her how exactly she fell into the fire for her to get a lower back burn like that, and her sister gave me a funny look. She goes, it was when Josh grabbed her by the throat and shoved her backwards. She fell in the fire on her back. Josh was her longtime boyfriend. They dated all through high school and then into their early 20s. He was a force to reckon with when he got angry. A really frightening type of guy. He got really mad at me one time and the look on his face, the way his eyes just changed, something was very wrong with with that guy. When we were in the hospital for some weird pain that I had, uninsured, and the doctors thought it might be cancer, I lost it a bit. She was so brave for me. But her mother called, she went into the bathroom to talk, but she didn't know that the sound echoed pretty loudly into the room. I heard her break down, sobbing telling her mom she didn't know how we were going to pay for treatment, and that it looked really bad. I'll never tell her I heard her, but god it was heartbreaking. When she came out you wouldn't even know she was even upset, she hid it so well. She sat right down, and told me everything was going to be fine with such determination and such certainty. Literally took out her computer then and there, and started making a fucking spreadsheet of our finances to fit in cancer. I knew how much she loved me in that moment, and how important it was for her that she was brave for me. I don't know why, but I got so calm after that, I haven't broken down like that since, even with worse news. I guess she makes me strong. God, I fucking love her. Edit. People are wondering if it is cancer. Unfortunately, yes I have stage 4 colon cancer, age 23. Had some major surgery which removed both ovaries, uterus, both fallopian tubes, cervix, they made me a new one. Science, man, appendix, a third of my colon, a spot on my liver, and around 20 lymph nodes. Got a port put in, and should be starting chemo next week. Unfortunately, there is no cure for colon cancer yet. My doc describes my situation as treatable, but not curable, but there are clinical trials and research being done, plus I heard maintenance chemo isn't too bad. 
so I'm going to fight like hell. Also by now, you may have guessed I'm a woman. Edit 2. Hell yeah my girl and I are still together. We actually just celebrated our one year wedding anniversary. I, unfortunately, fucked up our anniversary plans. Got, I just had to go and get cancer, but we've celebrated in our own way and the docs said they can work my chemo around our honeymoon that we have planned in August. Edit 3. Okay this is a lot of edits, but I think this is important. Please do not ignore symptoms. You know the only symptoms I had for stage 4 colon cancer? 3 weeks of some bloating, and then 4 days, where I had some on and off sharp pain. That's it, and I already had 2 cysts on my ovaries the sizes of grapefruits. The doctor said that it probably started 6 months before that. That's 5 months of nothing, then some bloating and all of a sudden stage 4 cancer. I got surgery less than a month later, and my doc said my ovaries were the sizes of footballs. Each. I was hesitant about getting it checked out too because fuck medical bills. But my grandmother ignored her bloating, and when she finally let us take her to a doctor she found out on a Friday she had stage 4 ovarian cancer and the next Friday she was dead. I don't play around with my symptoms anymore. And guys out there, don't think this doesn't apply to you too. My brother had pain for a few days in his junk and my family ignored it. His girlfriend rushed him to the hospital, and it was testicular cancer. He lost a ball. Don't be like us. Don't lose a ball. Your life is worth so much more than whatever medical bills come up. We thought for a while we would have to pay out of pocket, and we did for everything when we were still in NZ, but thanks to the acker I'm covered now. That doesn't mean things aren't still expensive, or that we don't need a real overhaul of the way we treat health insurance in the US, but god damn you are worth so much more than whatever you will owe. I know it's so fucked up, but if you learn anything from me, learn not to ignore your symptoms. Educate yourselves on your state's laws and programs sometimes under a certain age you get free healthcare, New York, and my insurance tried to lie to me about being covered because I'm married, and it's because I knew, because my wife told me, obviously, that that's not true, I'm not thousands in debt right now, love you all, take care of yourselves, and thank you so much for the love. Everybody likes snacks, right? Some of us like chips, others like fruit, or yogurt. Well, my wife likes croutons. Frozen croutons to be exact, and she tries to hide it like an alcoholic hides bottles of vodka. Where does she hide the croutons? In the freezer. At first I'd put them in the pantry when we get home from the grocery store, but they'd always end up in the freezer. I'd be like, uh, hon, what's up with the croutons in the freezer? And she'd act like she had no idea what I was talking about. Now here's the thing, I've tried them, and now I'm addicted to them too. So now I openly eat cold croutons out of the freezer as a snack, and she tells me what a weirdo I am, while she eats half the bag with me. No idea why she's embarrassed to admit what a genius she is for discovering such an awesome snack. BTW, the best kind is Chatham Village garlic and cheese flavor. A girl I dated a few years back had just graduated with her bachelors, so I took her out for a night on the town. Her and our friends got absolutely demolished, and since this was before Uber, I volunteered to be DD. So around 2am she's tanked, we head out, and she wants crystal burgers. Very adamant about that, so I stop by crystals and order a steamer pack, so I can have some too, and then have leftovers. She eats somewhere around 8, I get her home, get her into her bed and she immediately passes out. I'm sitting next to her watching some TV, when I smell something. I notice that she has just shit herself. She is one of those people who would be so ashamed of herself, if anyone found out so I just, left. I called her the next day, and told her I dropped her off, got her some water and headed home. Never mentioned her shitting herself or anything so to this day she thinks she did it in her sleep after I left. I could have stayed and helped her clean it up, and I probably should have, but she would have cried over that, and avoided me sporadically for weeks. Even though we had been married for 25 years, my wife and I always invented stupid private jokes between each other. 
I was lamenting the fact that we had fostered a Siamese cat from an adoption group that eventually got adopted, and I really missed her. At one point, we were looking through the website of the local pound, and a Siamese came up named Montag. The photo that they took of Montag was epic. A classic applehead Siamese, he was neutered, about 5 years old, and had horribly crossed eyes. Whoever took the photograph of him made him look both proud, distinguished, and adorably insane. Like some crazy dude that comes into the bar as a regular, claims he's the emperor of the United States of America, and everybody buys him around, because even though he is clearly crazy, he is also very charming. We started making up all the stories about Montag in a spoof of the world's most interesting man. Week after week, we checked to see if he had been adopted, but nobody wanted a crazy looking cross-eyed Siamese cat. Everyone at the pound said he was affectionate and had been there for quite some time. Sadly, this would be our last private joke together. My wife, who had a terminal illness, suddenly gotten much worse and passed away rather rapidly. We thought we had more time together, but she had sarcoidosis and her lungs had already been weakened by repeated pneumonia when she got the flu. Because she was on immunosuppressants for her condition, this is what did her in. She went into a coma and died a week later. My sister helped me with the funeral and taking care of a lot of things, including contacting everyone in her phone contacts on her cell phone. She asked me about why the Alexandria Pound would be trying to contact my late wife via voicemail. Apparently, my wife had applied to adopt Montag as a surprise gift. She paid the adoption fee and had scheduled a visit to adopt him. But she died before the appointment date. Sadly, my wife put it in her name only and the people of the pound were pretty rude about it. Like to adopt Montag I'd have to pay another adoption fee and they were made that she didn't show up and at the time it was chaos I couldn't deal with. My sister gave them an earful and they told her to go to hell. That ended that. I hope Montag eventually found a loving family. <laughs> His affair. I knew for 3 weeks before he left to look after his allegedly sick dad, and for two weeks after, before I told him I knew. He said last week he's ended it and sees what he has missed, but I know he's still sleeping and living with her whilst messaging me. Basically what he just did to me, I'm his wife, we were together 12 years. He just can't stop lying. He may be genuinely remorseful right now, but I can't get past his deceit. Update. Sorry if my comment was confusing, and thank you for all the replies. I found out in December, he was cruel and miserable throughout and nearly ruined Christmas for the kids. I suggested he go visit his sick dad at New York, and slammed that door right behind him. Took time off work, I was main earner then, and rearranged my life to take care of the kids and get a job with flexible hours. I'm happier. Kids are doing well. He's the one struggling now. My, soon to be, ex-wife met another guy about a year and a half ago. She was so bad at hiding it that I thought she wanted to get caught. Posting romantic stuff on her Instagram when we hadn't been romantic in a long time. Confronted her, lied even with solid evidence. A few months later stuff starts disappearing from the house, pretty obvious that she's moving out. Then we started to have no money every month and I have a pretty okay job, realized she was stealing money basically by paying her bills twice a month with 3, 4x the minimum payment and not paying mine. Let it go on for a bit and finally confronted her, she doesn't admit to it. I finally just pull my check from our joint account and she says she's leaving but is going to be homeless. The next day she had changed her facebook back to her maiden name and had a picture of her and the other guy at their new place. I don't know if this counts. Before my ex-wife and I had first split up, I had found out she was hiding a storage unit with an entire apartment set aside in it just in case the breakup went bad. She worked graveyard and I was using her laptop while watching The Walking Dead to use the story sync. And because she uses all Apple products, her Rye message was tied to her MacBook. I don't normally read her messages, but considering the amount of notifications that were chiming in, I could tell she was having a rather lengthy conversation. I opened it and started reading, 
and it turns out she had sent a picture message of a fully packed storage unit to her best friend out in South Carolina. It had furniture, appliances, essentially everything she needed to start out with an apartment on her own. I sat on that for several months before finally bringing it up out of nowhere. We were literally sitting on the couch one night and I just turned to her and said, so I know about your storage unit. She about shit a brick. It was the last thing she ever expected to hear because she thought she was being sneaky. Conversation actually went quite well though and we ended up deciding that we were going to file for divorce. That divorce just finalized March 3rd of this year. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Please leave a like and subscribe.